Well, hello, my book-loving friends. Welcome and welcome back to another video. Spring has sprung, or at least is about to. So today we'll be going through every book I plan on reading this spring, aka my spring TBR. Don't get me wrong, I by all means am a mood reader, but TBR videos have become a seasonal slash quarterly tradition here on my channel. I try to include books in these videos that have either crossed my mind and made me go, yeah, I wanna read that one soon, or books that give off that particular season's energy and thus I've been saving until then. So I would say that these books have like a 70% chance, is that fair, of being read? But ultimately, I let my books decide for me what I'm gonna read. They call out to me and say, Sarah, pick me, choose me love me. And who would I be to deny an iconic quote like that? Where are all my Grey's Anatomy fans at? Love that show. I'm so excited to share with you all these first two books, which are provided by today's video sponsor, Book of the Month. If you don't know about Book of the Month, Hello, let me enlighten you. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast-growing online book service whose mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books they love. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles, so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Book of the Month is also risk-free, so you can skip any month, any time, and will not be charged. Plus, they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. You can get your first book for just $9.99 with the code CHEERS. That is crazy. This month, I chose The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth, which is a thriller set at a cottage on a cliff with a sinister backstory. I've been introduced to so many great thrillers through Book of the Month. Also, I've been wanting to read another Sally Hepworth, so I love how Book of the Month read my mind and had this as an option this month. Another option for March is Rootless by Crystal Zara Apia, which is a debut novel about motherhood, sacrifice, and a marriage in crisis. I love this cover. It is stunning. Book of the Month also has a bunch of other books to choose from, so there's literally something for everyone. So if you have not already done so, make sure to head over to bookofthemonth.com and get your first book for just $9.99 with the code CHEERS. Again, thank you so much Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. This is a dream collaboration. Y'all know how much I love Book of the Month service. Next, I have a science fiction book I picked up the other month that I wanted to include because recently I finished Ready Player One and loved it. I think I'm having an identity crisis. Is science fiction my next love? I don't know, but I do know I want to read another one. So, The 22 Murders of Madison May by Max Berry is going on the TBR. This novel revolves around this girl named Madison who, in alternating universes, keeps getting murdered by the same space-time continuum traveling man. And so we follow this journalist who decides that she has to do something about this by chasing this man and trying to stop him. I'm so intrigued by this man because apparently murdering Madison once wasn't enough for whatever reason, so he has to murder every possible iteration of her. And I want know why. I was debating saving this for summer because I couldn't decide if this was giving spring or summer vibes. Like the prominent yellow on the cover is giving sunflowers blossoming on an early spring morning. But then on the other hand, the blue is giving swimming in the ocean on a hot summer's day. So maybe this will be an in-between spring and summer book. I'm thinking around late May, early June. The Girls I've Been by Tessa Sharp I've been looking for for about six months now and had not been able to find a physical copy of it. Life of a book hunter, am I right? I don't know if bookstores are just not selling this book anymore or if the printing press had decided to seize production until one day I stumbled upon her and I couldn't believe my eyes. I thanked the big man up there and bought her instantly. I didn't even care that it was an expensive $19.99 hardback. I did slightly care, but I was just so excited that this book was finally in my life. <sighs> My receipt. Oh, I got the educator discount. I love that for me. I could go on a whole spiel about the Barnes & Noble educator discount. That's not for today. The Girls I've Been is a YA mystery novel that follows the daughter of a con artist who was raised as this little con artist prodigy until one day she decides to escape and leave her con living life behind. But five years later, she finds herself a hostage during a bank robbery. But little do the bank robbers know whom they are really holding hostage. I love the feminist energy I'm getting from the protagonist. You guys know now, why I've been on the hunt for this book. This sounds right up my alley. So excited to read this. Still can't comprehend that I have this book in my hands right now. I've been overdue for a TGR book and I do have two here on my physical TBR. One True Loves and maybe in another life. The synopsis of One True Loves reminds me a lot of Winter in Paradise by Ellen Hildebrand, which I just read fairly recently because they both revolve around a husband who mysteriously goes missing in a plane crash. So as of right now, I think I'm leaning towards maybe in another life. 
but I've heard great books about this one as well. The summary of this book has butterfly effects written all over it. I've not even thought about that until now. How this book not only explores one of my favorite phenomenons, but it's explored by one of my favorite authors. <laughs> okay, okay. I think this is gonna have to be it. This novel follows two concurrent storylines of the aftermath of our protagonist Hannah's decision of whom she decides to leave a bar with one night, her best friend Gabby, or her high school boyfriend Ethan. So as these two alternate realities run their course, we follow, is anything meant to be? How much in our lives is determined by chance? And perhaps, is there such thing as a soulmate? I have had a TJR itch recently, so hopefully this can scratch it. <laughs> Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes has made its way for the third time in a TBR video. How much do you want to bet that this will be on my summer's TBR? This book has been on every single one of my TBRs, no joke. And hasn't the fourth season of You already come out? I am so behind. <laughs> okay, every wrap up this spring, if I have not read this book yet, I need you guys to troll me in the comments. Sarah, you said you would read Hidden Bodies. This is getting a bit ridiculous now. Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I've already told y'all will be my spring break read since this takes place over the character spring break. We're going to match, love that for me. But their spring break sounds like it's going to be a lot more eventful than mine and I'm making an educated guess here it results in only five survivors. If this book has any twist like the last book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, it's going to be a lot. Automatically, from the synopsis, we know that the stakes are going to be high because we follow a group of six friends who are driving along in their RV over spring break when suddenly a sniper shoots out their tires, leaving them broken down in their RV in the middle of nowhere. The flap also states that buried secrets will be forced to light and tensions inside the RV will reach deadly levels. Secluded thrillers are always a check in my book. Surprisingly, I've heard literally no reviews of this novel, so if you have read this, let me know your thoughts. Is this another Holly Jackson banger or did she miss the mark? I'm hoping for the former. Some of you are probably like, Sarah, where are your spring-ass books? Because these other books aren't really screaming spring. And look, I do have a lot of books on my physical TBR that cover-wise would be perfect for spring, but then my spring TBR would just solely be filled with romances with flowers on the cover. And there would be nothing wrong with that per se, but I just want my TBR to be a little more diverse. But this next book though, not only has flowers on the cover, but also in the title. And I've been actually saving this for spring because it's just giving. So much of that vibe. The Confidence of Wildflowers by an author I can't pronounce the name of. I'm really curious to see where I land with this book because it seems to be that people are either in two camps, y'all either really love it or really loathe it. But then again, I think every person I've seen read this book, they have also read the second book, so how much can they really hate it, right? This is an age gap romance that follows our protagonist who falls for her new grumpy landscaper next door neighbor after he asks her to nanny his kid. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I love children in books. Y'all would hate me if I told you that I actually kind of like the pregnancy trope. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna say that, but I'm also not not saying that. If it's done right, it can be good. Remember how I just stated that I'm trying not to put books on this TBR solely because of having flowers on the cover? Come on. <laughs> this spine was made to be cracked in the spring, like a spine after sitting and having a two hour readathon. Man, these metaphors just keep getting more and more unhinged in every video. I Kissed Sahara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This might come as a surprise, but I have not read a Casey McQuiston yet. I do want to read Red, White, and Royal Blue sometime. Even though that book, it seems like it has been out forever, it just has not made its way into my life yet. But whereas that book seems to be heavily romance, this book seems to be more balanced between being a mystery and a romance because it looks like we follow what happens to this girl Sahara after she kisses three people and then vanishes. So these three strangers then decide to band together and use Sahara's cryptic clues to find her because apparently that's what you do after someone ghosts you. It also looks like there's a bit of an academic rivalry in here because Sahara and one of the people she kisses, Chloe, are both in the running for Vala Victorian. Ooh, tea. The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Whenever I find a thriller author I really enjoy a book from, I become a little obsessed. This is the next Ruth Ware I will hopefully read soon. In this thriller, we follow four friends who back in boarding school used to play this game they dubbed The Lion Game, which eventually got them expelled under the mysterious circumstances surrounding one of the teacher's death, who was also one of the girl's father. And now 17 years later, the last lie they told has come back to haunt them. This sounds like a petty drama filled thriller with a little bit of an academia vibe I may be completely wrong there, but I'm intrigued. I also want to read another Sherry Lapina this spring. Y'all know I love her, but I still won't properly feel like a Sherry Lapina stan until I've read her whole backlist. I've been apprehensive though to start these because out of all of her books, these are the two that I've seen get the most negative reviews. That is The Couple Next Door and A Stranger in the House. I'm pretty sure these are her first novels, so it's kind of understandable that they probably won't be as up to par as her later releases. Nevertheless, I still think I'm going to enjoy them because 
because I do quite like Sherry Lapina's writing style and voice, but I'm just scared that these are going to be a dud, which will cause me to mourn my preconceived notion that I'm going to like every book by this author. I think I'm putting way too much pressure on Sherry Lapina. It's really not that deep, but when I'm in the mood for a suburban domestic thriller, I will pick one of these up. Hot House Flower by Kristen and Becca Ritchie. I'm pretty sure it was also on my winter TBR. I really don't have a good reason for why I have not read this book yet. Other than that, I just haven't. Super excited to get to this though. I know I'm going to love it, just like how I've loved every other book in the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series. Maybe that's it. I've kind of noticed that if I'm fairly certain I'm going to enjoy a book, I kind of put it off. It doesn't make sense. I think I'm just saving those books for when I really need a five-star read. And then lastly, there are a few books that I don't own yet, but I will be buying this spring and then reading immediately. I'm more sure that I will read those books this spring than I'm sure that I will read any of these other books I've mentioned here today. Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun by El Cosmano. Do I need to say more? It seems like in every video I talk to you guys about how much I love the Finley Donovan series. This series is such a fun, comforting time. I will happily be booktube's Finley Donovan spokeswoman. I'm also so excited you guys just don't understand, maybe some of you do, but for Abby Jimenez's new release, yours truly, this book comes out April 11th, the day after my birthday, and I think it's a sign. Happy birthday to me, am I right? And yours truly, we follow a side character we met in Part of Your World, another one of my favorite books, and it sounds like it's a romance between doctors. STEM characters are everything. As a side note, whoever Abby Jimenez has hired to design her covers, I just wanna say is doing a fantastic job. It's gorgeous, babes. Let's just get to stacking now. Okay, can't even properly see that. Here is my maybe a bit ambitious spring TBR. But if you aim for the moon and miss, you'll land among the stars. That's the expression, right? I really enjoy making these TBR videos because they get me re-excited to read these books. Like I wanna read every single book here right now. Let me know which books you've been eyeing lately and also which of these you would like me to prioritize. Because if you guys tell me to read a book, I'll be much more likely to read it than if I just tell myself I'm going to read a book. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me my channel add a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and will have a fantastic spring reading season. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.